expected yet. I think we're gonna win this match, JB! Go, go, go! <laughs> What's up, guys? It's late Wednesday night, and I just got home from robot racing. What a night it was. It was the busiest night of the year so far. And I got to do something really cool. I got to drive up the strip with Shane's uh, Fiesta ST. Thank you so much, Shane. I flip it. Oh, you brother. And uh, thanks, Alex, for organizing that, by the way. And I got to take up a very special guest in the car and ask him the questions that you guys wanted answers to. So here is my interview with the one and only JP Smith. Enjoy, guys. When I heard JP Smith was going to be at the track, I knew I needed to ambush him. As I watched him charm everyone within earshot, I knew I needed to get a home ground advantage. I needed to show this guy that clearly knows nothing about cars why we love this sport so much. <laughs> For that, I needed a car. This is Shane Buxton's not-so-stock Fiesta ST. With some of the interior stripped out and 170 kilowatts, it was the perfect car for a night at the drags. Okay, so how does this work again? <laughs> okay. oh, it's encouraging. I need to first figure out how to start this car. There we go. Okay. I was wondering if you're going to try and figure out which is the gear lever, <laughs> yeah. which is the brake. <laughs> yeah. okay. Look, I must say, when I drive a new car for the first time, I always have this sort of glazed, confused look on my face. All right. So don't worry about it too much. Okay. Um, that's not alcohol induced. No, 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 no. <laughs> I think I've driven with people um, with a lot less competency. Um, really? Yes, than you. So I've, I've been on the street with people who probably shouldn't have been anywhere near a steering wheel. Yeah, and now you're with me. <laughs> so maybe I shouldn't make an opinion until Yeah, yeah, afterwards. you need to first yeah. see me driving. Okay. So, JP Smith, um, you know, I, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna let's start to the easy questions here. You know, let's start to the easy questions. I really wanna. I, I know you've been getting a lot of crap from people, and so I don't want to hassle you too much. So let's start easy. Question. When are you guys gonna stop harassing the races outside the track? So we discussed this with traffic again today. Okay. They say they're not harassing. They say that they're enforcing the law on two issues: the roadworthiness of the vehicle, mm -hmm. and the. Um, the reckless and negligent driving when some people leave and they want to race. Okay. So the traffic says to me that they will make sure that they focus on the reckless and negligent driving and they, with their management, will discuss the issue of the roadworthiness because I'm saying to them it's an own goal. Yeah. No point in spending all your energy in encouraging people to come here and then you do through that one enforcement action, you drive people away. They're not going to stop racing. They're just going to race on the public road. So and that is an own goal, which I don't think is helpful. exactly. That's why we got this facility here. Uh, so I'm going to continue with the easy questions. Kilani's lease. Uh, what is the city doing about Kilani's lease? So their lease is got about another, I think, five six years left on it. So we'll have to start that conversation soon about their lease. I don't see a scenario in which we don't renew the lease because. There's so much ancillary industry that's attached to Kalani. So much uh, motorsport, uh, tuning, uh, workshop and related business that there is no way that, that you can just make Kalani go away. And those cities that did remove their racetracks on the assumption that they'd be able to create one somewhere else, that never happened. So yeah, many West, of them West lost Bank Raceway, yeah. uh, uh, the Durban Raceways, all so of them. So they lost their racetracks and, and Cape Town, this is part of our culture. So there's but, no but, way but, that but, but JP, I would it's, support. It's part of my culture. It's not part of your culture, is it? I do it. Many of us have, have history. <laughs> no, no, but see, no, I don't believe you. because I, I, didn't, I didn't drop into the city council without, um, without history. Um, when I was younger, I used to go out with the guys to Pivis in Indiana. Really? I have even taken my own car to Pivis so, and perform. So, so, wait, so, wait, so, just start again. You used to be involved with the racing as well? When I was younger, I had friends who were part of the racing scene. This for me was a, a great new adventure. I would go out with them and, um, and, and uh, go and see the guys dice at Indiana at really? the Blackheath pitch. There was a pitch at the back of Blackheath. <laughs> you, you and you, you've heard about the place called Pavilion, right? Yeah, at Pibbies. I've uh, <laughs> been out to Pibbies. I will tell you one or two misadventures I had in Pibbies, but... Uh, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to be Pibbies. duplicated. And um, 
Uh, I think we discussed the statute of limitations. Yes, issue. the statute of limitations. I don't want to get involved with your with your past yeah. crimes. But having said, but I must tell you that carried on until one night I witnessed a particularly nasty accident, and that made me think carefully about how safe or unsafe this is, and whether one actually has the road, the driving skill to do this safely. Yeah, so and I think a lot of guys think they do. So but speaking of driving skill. I got it though, I need to see, how, see how, does, how does this work? Where's the Do I get to here? score you after? Yeah, of course. Of course. Look, we need if to. If you win. make me be in a losing car, <laughs> <you're gonna be laughs> I know, but that car's really fast. Yes, though. yes. That car's really fast. You didn't Actually, choose Actually, I'm well. going to go off the track bite. I'm going to go off the track bite. I'm going to go off the track bite. There we go. Okay. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, that guy's trying to jump me. I told you that dude's fast that dude's fast cheers why am i talking too excited yet i think we're gonna win this one jb go 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 <laughs> all right yes uh, yes right. man I love you that winning thing. You make me proud. You make me proud. <laughs> okay, so I thought you were a big, heavy guy, but obviously this weight, extra weight, didn't make any difference. No, the diet has helped. I've shared quite a few kilos recently. It's um, but I, I was heard, worried I was going to slow you down. I heard that you were a Ford fan back in the day. A Ford fan. Yes, I'm. Yes, I had a '71 Ford Fairlane that I used to take to pubbies. Uh, beautiful old car. I loved that car. And then I started a business. I needed the money. I sold the car. Oh, a very sad day in my life and yeah. when I have um, the spare cash again I'm definitely buying myself another muscle so, car. So you're petrol this is not this is not my scene. This is I not, like okay. the muscle car. <laughs> so you are a petrol head? Uh, absolutely. At the moment sadly I'm a diesel head. Okay. Because I drive a, a Vol diesel Volvo but okay I that's a different I love diesel Volvos. The people that, that watch my videos probably think I'm lame for it but diesel Volvos are the best. The, 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 the XC60 which I drive. I had an XC60 last year, week. I love that it car. It is an awesome vehicle. I told you guys that car's a good car. And if you don't know that you don't know Jack. <laughs> I'm not allowed to say the second part but you just don't know anything. You I told you guys. The S, I had the T6 uh, R design. Oh, uh, what a car. That's a special. Well, okay, we, that's also out of my price range. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm, a, a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm not a corrupt politician. <laughs> so that's well beyond my price. See, that's range. what I was, I was kind of hoping so because I might, I may or may not have a traffic fine that I need to get uh, taken care of. The math, there's no way for me to help you with that. <laughs> <laughs> Damn I have it. to pay my own fines, <laughs> which mercifully I get very few of. Okay, good. I was that's what I was gonna ask you. Do you actually get any parking fines? Or yes, sir. So you don't you don't have like like a special like a badge that you flash and they're just I like know. that. Unfortunately, is not one of the books. This job has remarkably few books. There's remarkably few books. <laughs> the best book is the ride-alongs I get to do with the Ghost Squad and the Metro Police Gang Unit yeah. and the Marine Unit. Those ride-alongs I live for. And I think the rest of the job, I find, I becomes tolerable because I get to do the the, the ride-alongs. Well, the the one thing that I wanted to ask you also is, um, you guys are in talks at the moment with this, the track races, with the street races, with Kilani to come up with a solution, and you are fielding from what I saw. And I'm surprised. I'm, I, I was coming. I was going to come at you tonight, but I can. I'm starting to get on your side here. I can see that you're fielding all questions. I'm keen for this to work. The outcome must be that we provide street racers with a space where they can legally race, where they don't have us on our backs, where they don't have to look over their shoulder. And I mean, the point now is one of the impediments is the top end strip. There okay. isn't a top end um, uh, strip where they can access. This is too short. So either we have to extend the strip, we've discussed it now with them, and extend through into the dump, um, and then close the access road, the earlier access road to the slip road at nights when we do this so that there's a top end strip we'll have to see how much that costs or uh, host every second event at Wingfield or Oesterplot but th that will depend on Wingfield and Oesterplot being amenable to that but I know a and guy and they're not that eager I anymore I know a guy you know a guy I know a guy ok good, <laughs> good. they were going to go speak to um, to Oesterplot and Wingfield make sure your guy is no in you're, my guy. Oh, you're my guy <laughs> you're my I guy I don't know how much pull we have with the um, uh, with uh, with Wingfield and Oesterplot but we're going to try Okay. That's one option, um, and then uh, we're renewing the. Uh, we will review the the memorandum of agreement we have with them and renew it, 
and um, get the city to put some more money into this so that we can reduce the entrance cost right. so that when people come at night there's there's less cost to pay um, we can entice more people to participate here and then um, we've spoken to traffic about what they do outside I can't force them to do anything that's a code of conduct violation for a politician to do that but, but, but I can discuss with the management whether it serves the greater purpose of getting people off the street and onto the track. Yeah, exactly, because the guys kind of lurk outside here. And I get that they want to enforce the safety aspect. I get the car is not road legal. I get all of the guys are speeding, especially I get Well, they want the, um, the cars that aren't street legal, they want towed on a trailer. Mm. So ideally, yes, that should be the case. Sometimes the street legal is borderline yeah and the simpler the act of stopping all those vehicles creates an environment which in i think if i were a street racer might be just that tipping point where i rather stay on this on the street and not come here so let's not make that exactly let's exactly. not make that an unnecessary impediment if we don't have to yeah. traffic's management will apply their mind and let's see what we can do so the stricter rules that 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 because that i feel was like a knee-jerk reaction by everybody let's impound the cars let's crash the cars all that kind of stuff unless a solution is put in place then obviously that's not a practical solution but if what you're saying is true and you guys are going to look for answers then um, then there's no excuse to be racing illegally anymore is it so when when we had the uh, debate about two three years ago when this whole thing came to a fever pitch as well around a series of incidents i approached kilani and said can we not create a regular drag racing thing the city will co-fund it mm. there was a street to strip event then and that event got expanded now into into this yeah um i think it's time now to review and and take it to the next step again i think so too and jp smith what a pleasure i'm very glad we won because but dude the pleasure is all mine i got to get on a on a drag <laughs> i haven't done that in a long time so uh that's uh that's much appreciated that's really cool yeah no thank you jp smith guys the man himself so as you guys can see, I think, so as you guys can see, I do think that they are looking to find actual solutions to the problem here. And only time will tell, but the questions that you guys have asked and the questions that the racers are asking are starting, I think, to be answered. Let me know in the comments below what you think. If you like the video, please consider subscribing and don't forget to click that like button. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.